Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. I think this is number 91. I think. (sighs) So, Andre is yet again full of energy for some reason really don't know what's going on with him he's like non-stop he's uh, yeah I don't know what's going on he's been like this for about a week or two it's uh, it seems like he's acting like it's spring but it's not uh, it's January well it's just February now isn't it and I don't know if you can hear him but he's he's basically trying to get through the front door but he's been trying to do that for three years without success although saying that yesterday I put the rubbish out and I came back upstairs opened the front door and he shot out he ran ran for it it's like what was what is he trying to escape from it's, he's got everything he needs in it oh excuse the noises it's just the chair A big black squeaky chair. He wants to go out. I did take him out yesterday. And uh, it's it's quite weird. I don't I don't know what's going on because I'll take him out and he's and he's straight away he's trying to pull pull away. You know, he's leading the way to where he wants to go. So, I don't know. But it is annoying me at the moment. It's getting a little bit too much. I'm going to, might have to put him back into the cupboard. I've got a storage cupboard. It's a very, it's a large room. It's a big room. So I might put his cage back in there and because if I put him in his cage now he'll spend the next 20 minutes trying to get out of the cage so there'll be even more noise so yeah but I can't allow him to get in the way of me doing my work which is this talking about nothing talking about him so it's not really nothing is it but so I suppose just need to let you know that there will be background sounds but that can be part of the part of the process So he's just got into the bathroom. Now he's going to go into the kitchen, open the kitchen door probably, and pull stuff out of the cupboard. Now he's having a drink of water. To be fair, it's really quite a nice day outside. It's sunny although it looks like it's beginning to cloud over a bit but it's fairly mild it's not doesn't feel cold oh it's looking good looks like he's going into his bag which hopefully will mean that he'll be going to sleep and he'll be quiet for a bit I hope 
good. So only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Or if you're... <sighs> if you watch it on YouTube, watching the video on YouTube, again, only watch the video if you can safely close your eyes. And please subscribe. I've got about 204 subscribers at this point. So I'd like to get a few more if that's possible. I'm looking forward to getting up to a thousand because it's a, still a res relatively new YouTube channel. But I'd like to keep this one just you know I'm trying to create new content daily and I suppose there's not much more I can do than that and hope that what I do create is useful to some people so these, oh, again. I'm making more noise today than normal. I don't know why. Ah, I could fall asleep. I might fall asleep, especially listening to myself. I'd like to get a new chair, but I've had this chair for When did I move in here? Was it 2015? April. So it's nearly four years. It'll be four years in two months. Wow. And I got this chair. Yeah, it must have been. Maybe September, October time. In 2015. So I've had it for over three years. And it's wearing out. It's wearing out. Where I put my head. Actually, I don't put my head. <laughs> where my head rests. Because my head is attached to my body. I don't just put my head on a part of the chair. It just sounds weird. Oh, he's got out of his bag again. I hope he goes back in and keeps quiet. Otherwise, he's going to go on to the naughty step. He's very thirsty as well. He's decided he doesn't like where the bag is, so he's moving the bag underneath my table so that I can keep bashing my feet on it. Yeah, that's a good boy. Oh, I think somehow this chair's managed to move itself against the wall. So I used to be able to put my hand down the side of it without it making a squeaky noise. But yeah, we're back to the chair again. Where my head rests against the back of the chair. Well, it's not the back of the chair, it's because that would be the bit facing the wall behind me, isn't it? But it's the 
I suppose the headrest part of the chair is wearing off it's literally peeling off now and the part where I am the part that comes up for my feet that's also really really worn as well Yeah, I'm pretty sure I had this chair when I got Andre. Pretty sure I did. Because I reckon if I'd have had... No. Yeah, I had it before I got him. Because if I'd have had it after I got Andre... I probably would have kept the box for him to play in. So it came in in a big old box, massive. In fact, I don't think I could get the box inside the flat. I had to take parts of the chair out because it was in two pieces. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the box wouldn't fit inside the door, but it might have done. I have like an image of it fitting through fine and dragging it into the living room and then unpacking it. But then I have another memory of it being too big to get inside the door. So I needed to open it and bring parts of it in a bit at a time, but it was in two parts. So two two journeys, although it's not. What is a journey? I mean, from the front door to the living room, is that really a journey? It's not really, is it? It's a, does a journey, if it doesn't have at least a canoe, or a bicycle, you know, some kind of form of transport. Is it a journey? If you can walk somewhere, is that a journey? I don't know. Anyway, regardless of whether I got the box in or whether I had to carry parts of the chair in bit by bit, two bits. Oh, also, and screws. I'm pretty sure I had screws and stuff like that. And maybe there's more than two bits. Maybe I had to attach the bit to the body of it. I can't remember. But either way, it was... Uh, I mean, it happened, and it got done. So, it's been sitting here for three, over three years. So it's clearly, uh, whatever was required for it to be assembled was put into action at that particular time because I've been sitting in it for over three years. Well, I have not been just been sitting in it for three years. I've been doing other things as well, but you know, I've spent a fair amount of time uh, vacationing in it. That's probably not the right word, but sitting, sitting or sliding back and relaxing for a while the chair was wonky and I couldn't figure out why and then I don't know if it was my dad or if it was a friend 
uh, looked at it and it was actually it wasn't slotted in properly so it was leaning just to one side but when I got that sorted it was good a while back not too long ago a few months ago I I just I, I thought there was something underneath the chair so I kind of pulled it out and the chair fell apart and it was early hours of the morning so I was trying to be really quiet and it, the chair just came apart it was because it's uh, it is attached the two bits go together but then there's screws to sort of keep it in one place well the screws have become loose and it was just uh, you know in two pieces but I managed to fit it back together and screw it in really tight so it's very sturdy now but it is squeaky and I was about to say that I've tried everything to try and get rid of the squeak but I haven't the only thing I've done is I've used this furniture polish because when I moved into the flat back in 2015 my dad said to me about the squeaky doors he said well you know what you can do with a squeaky door with the hinges that are squeaky I said what's that he said well there's a way of uh, that you can stop the hinges from squeaking I said, yeah, it's yeah, oil. You just put oil in it, don't you? And I felt kind of, well, not pleased with myself, but adequately, uh, I thought it was an adequate response. And he said, oh. I said, what, what do you mean, oh? He said, well, there's another way you can do it without using oil. I said, is there? I'll admit, I was surprised at my interest because door hinges aren't normally something that I give much thought to. You know, if I was ever to choose a new hobby, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't involve door hinges. And he said to me, uh, yeah, you, you can use furniture polish. I said, what? He said, yeah, you can. I felt we were bonding. It's kind of probably the first time we ever bonded. I felt like quite the first time I felt in some way kind of like we were on the same level and it took door hinges and furniture polish to get us there and he said yeah and he sprayed it and I couldn't believe it worked just by spraying the furniture polish onto the hinge of the door the metal hinge it stopped squeaking but there's no residue there's no oil there's no you don't get anything on yourself, you know, you haven't got to worry about getting oil on yourself. It's like, wow, it's like magic. It was like magic. It was, it's not the same as the first time I saw someone being sawed in half. And I should point out that that was on, you know, magic trick on television. It wasn't some kind of, horrible uh, thing it was yeah it was it's the first time I you know if you see I don't think I've ever seen never seen a magic 
trick done live um you know as in watching a magician on stage ah oh, that's not totally true there was a couple of a couple of comedians that I've seen do magic probably a few actually there's one who was like a Tommy Cooper mimic he basically did a Tommy Cooper act and it was really funny but it was it was just copying Tommy Cooper but it was a really good really funny and he was doing magic as well so uh, I can't remember what his name was but he was very popular on the comedy circuit and then there was Jerry Sadovich Jerry Sadovich is a very, fa very famous Scottish comedian who is famous for being um adult should we say and uh, he was once he did a a performance at the uh, where is it the festival in Canada it was like a comedy there's a comedy festival in Canada uh, every year it's a very famous festival and he went there and he he upset somebody by talking about French stuff. Uh, so I think you might be able to find the clip on YouTube. But I'd seen him on telly. No, and I had a video of him in the probably about 1990. I had a video of him on stage, and it's very funny. And then about 1990, probably three or four, I saw him on stage, but he was in a really tiny pub. And I guess he was just trying some material out. Uh, it was called The Egg Shop. This is the name of the comedy club. It was called The Egg Shop. And the compare and the person that ran it was very funny as well. And it was just a small audience. And I'm not sure if I was performing on that night or not. Uh, I can't, I'm not sure. I might have just gone there to see Jerry Sadovich. But I laughed so much. He, it was so funny. He, uh, it might have been late 90s the, yeah it might not have been early it might have been more like 95, 96, 97 but he did all his magic tricks but, he, but they were kind of comedy magic tricks but as well as sort of telling jokes and one of the funniest uh, comedians I've ever seen ever and I've seen hundreds and hundreds of comedians thousands of performances over the years and he's one of the top ones I've ever seen for just laughing continuously uh, another one would be Dennis Leary it's uh, just for pure uh, unable to stop laughing just anyway so I did see a, although there was magic there he was doing like magic tricks it wasn't really about the magic although he Jerry Sadovich was classed as one of the the best close up magic magicians like I think card magic or something so he was famous for that as well but uh It's quite weird because, not weird, but he used to do a double act with someone called, another comedian called Logan Murray. 
and Logan Murray's also like an actor. He teaches comedy. He's been around for years and he still looks the same. I can't believe it. I saw him in an advert the other day. He still looks the same as he did 20 years ago. It's amazing. And it's a, but he's really, really gentle, really nice person. And then you've got Jerry Sadovich, who's, as far as his act goes, I mean, he's very full on, very harsh, very offensive, and all that stuff. And the, the, the idea of them two being together in a double act just seemed really strange. But I never saw it. I never saw the double act. But I got to know Logan Murray, but I didn't get to, never got to know Jerry. I saw him on stage at one time. But uh, very, very funny. I did a friend, my friend Noel, used to do a escape act. You know, with it, uh, he used, he used to get a member of the audience to put him into a straitjacket and then he'd escape from it. So that's that's magic, isn't it? It's part of a magic routine. Escape, escapology. Um, which is what I'm trying to do with this conversation. I'm trying to escape it. Can you imagine being stuck talking to me at a party and you're single and you've been single for a long time and you f your friend has finally talked you into coming out to a party to a public place and you've come in there and you put all the effort in to make yourself look nice and you feel confident and you're looking around and there's lots you know there's lots of uh eligible potential uh, partners future partners for you that are in that room in that big space and I've cornered you and I'm talking to you about magic acts that I've seen at the egg shop and Jerry Sadovich And you, you really want to find a way out of the conversation. And you're looking over at other people and, and you notice even the other people that you think, I'd like to talk to them. They start talking to other people. And the more you hear my voice, the more boring and tedious it feels. Pointless and tedious. Just a bunch of stuff, a bunch of words, all just for the sake of talking. And you wonder how, how can I be interested in what I'm saying when what I'm saying is so damn boring. I'm trying to think of any other See when I was a kid. Paul Daniels was the main magician in England. I say the main, he was the most famous magician, I would say probably that this country's ever known. Paul Daniels. And of course we've got famous magicians here, uh, such as Dynamo, um, I'm trying to think. Darren Brown, although he doesn't really do sort of magic anymore so much, but uh, whatever, yeah, we've got, got famous magicians 
in England. Here's a bit of an interesting, uh, very in war, proper war, interesting. Dynamo was famous in America before he was famous in England. Can you believe that? He was famous in America, so he was rich and well known long before anyone in, in England knew who he was. You know, like uh, in that capacity. And then, of course, he went on and he became a superstar here as well for magic. But what Paul Daniels did is he had a television show which was on I think for 30 years or something like that he was on television doing like Christmas specials and he'd be on on Saturday nights Saturday evenings doing magic tricks and he was like a regular face that you'd see you know for 30 odd years 20, 30 years or whatever it was and he used to say uh, one of his catchphrases is you're like this not a lot but you're like this not a lot it was something like that and was it, is it how's about that then was that his catchphrase I wonder if he said abracadabra I lose track. There's so many people from the 70s and the 80s that had catchphrases. So there was one comedian that used to say, Chase me, chase me. What was his name? Oh, there was another comedian who said, Oh, you are awful. Uh, is that Dick Emery? You are awful, but I like you anyway. Oh, and there was, uh, what's his name? Kenny Everett, who is uh, dressed up as a woman, and he crosses his legs and saying, done in the best possible taste. He did have another character, Sid's not here. That's another one. So there's lots of catchphrases. Or well, the A team, Hannibal from the A team, or oh, I love it when a plan comes together. I can't believe I got a career back after all those films I did 20 years ago. And now I'm a star again. Whatever. Oh, is it um, Mr. T? I pity the fool. And Nanu Nanu, that was another one. And you got uh, what are you talking about, Willis? From different strokes. See, Alice, I don't know if you remember Alice. It's a program I used to watch when I was a kid. And it was, I've always liked, I don't know why, but I've always kind of been attracted to American shows. But not necessarily the uh, popular American shows that are pushed on us, you know, that are kind of put on peak time. I always quite liked the 
the shows that would be on maybe Channel 4 or BBC 2 early evening or early morning shows that didn't really they might have been really popular in America but they didn't really have much of an air in, in England but they were shown at weird times see one one show was called Alice and it was set in a diner and as far as I'm aware it was very popular in America uh, but I used to watch it I used to love it I used to have it on every night because they just show back to back episodes just like at the moment um, for years now they've been showing um, Everybody Loves Raymond and they show that early hours of the morning like I don't mean like 2 o'clock but like early hours as in like maybe 6, 7 o'clock in the morning they show that maybe 2 or 3 episodes and they've been showing it for years because they it was on for about 10 years I think or if not longer so they've just showed the episodes lots of episodes and King of Hearts I think or Heart of Kings King of King of Hearts King of Queens that's it King of Queens that's that's another show that they show again these, these are programs that have never been as far as I'm aware they've never been peak peak time in England But I know that Everyone Loves Raymond was a big hit TV show in America. So it would have been on a peak viewing time, I guess, early evening. But never has been here. Another show I used to watch in the 90s. And I came across this by accident because I woke up one day and... Uh, I think I had to get up at 6 o'clock in order to get up for work and I had to be at work at 7 and this one time I woke up at 5 so I just turned the TV on and there was a program called Soap I'd never heard of it before and it had uh, something Mulligan the, the man uh, it was so funny and it had quite a few famous or people that went on to be famous in it and it was really chaotic and it was just hilarious and I thought why are they showing this at 6 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning rather why Why is it you know but I realised it was from early 80s or late 70s whether it was ever on peak time I don't know I don't ever remember seeing it ever on television before or since that time and this was early 90s like 92, 93 and it was such a great show so funny and it had Billy Crystal he was in it because he was really young in that and it was just yeah what other shows did I see I'm sure Cheers used to be on. It went through a period when Cheers was on. In the mornings. But that hasn't been on for years. But what they do on Channel 4, they show Frasier. 
and they show two episodes every morning between something like nine and ten and it's on five days a week and they start right from the very first episode right to the very last episode and then they start all over again another American show is uh, Two and a Half Men so this is a, a show that's never been on our television as a show like never been on peak viewing it's on a channel called ITV2 and I know it was a big show in America with Charlie Charlie whatever his name is uh, and so I, I started watching it probably a couple of years ago and I've really kind of liked it it's like oh this is actually funny and they used to show two episodes every evening uh, one I think it was one at eight o'clock to half past eight and then they'd have adverts and stuff but they'd, all, they'd also have an advert usually in the middle of the episode And then another episode to half an hour till nine o'clock. And I used to watch it every night for months and months. And then they got to the the season where Charlie left and what's his name? Uh, what's his name? I don't know he was married to Bruce Willis's wife okay so he took over and I remember his, his name in the show is Smith uh, something Smith so he's and that was good as well so he was good in that but what they do is they don't even show all the episodes anymore now all they do is they've got on a loop and they show pretty much the last season so they said the first season of uh, after what's his name left and then maybe the last but there's a couple of seasons because I think they did four seasons and they, they miss out a big chunk But they just have it on a loop and they keep showing the same thing. I think my latest TV show I've been watching from America is Superstore. And I've uh, again there they show a whole season all in one go. So that the latest season they've shown one episode a day for five you know for you know five days a week Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and Friday and then they so that's the first five episodes and then the next week they'll show like six episode six on Monday episode seven on Tuesday episode eight on Wednesday episode 9 on Thursday episode 10 on Friday and then they go forward until it's finished and then they start all the way from the beginning again so I've just seen the the recent episode which the, the recent season which lasted for maybe two weeks or maybe three weeks and now they started showing the very first episode of season one again I 
although I did quite enjoy it, but it's just, what, why? Why are they doing that? It's this sort of kind of spoiling a good thing, you know? There's got to be other shows that they could show. One of my favourite shows is Terry and June and George and Mildred. They're two of my favourite shows. When I was a kid though, we used to have, um, you know, I was talking about magic and I forget his name now, but the the magician that I was talking about, he had box, little boxes or big boxes of magic tricks, and I used to get them for Christmas and for birthdays, and that's another reason he was so successful because he sold, he just sold these magic boxes and magic kits and magic tricks all around the country and it was so popular and I, I had I remember at least one magic box set that I had I loved it I think there was a little rope trick there was a little kind of little spatula thing that I could turn around and it went from zero spots to three spots or two spots but the spots changed the number of spots changed and there was another uh, like a mechanical trick which allowed me to do something but I forget what it was but it was really good fun you know and I suppose part of the fun and the enjoyment of the process was to test the tricks out on other people and you can imagine me you can imagine being stopped by me and not only am I going to bore you with stories, but I've also got a trick to show you. And you've got no idea how long it's going to last. And you just want to get away. But here's me saying, oh, well, I've got this trick. And you're thinking, oh, please, please don't set up a table. And I get like a cup out and an egg and then oh no, what's he gonna do? Is he gonna make a cup disappear? Is he gonna eat an egg? I can make an egg appear out of his ear. But anyway. I think they should have feel happy that I was doing tricks for them sign of kindness isn't it to share your passions even if your passions are tedious to them still sharing still sharing sharing yeah I like the way I say sharing I might do a bit more often Maybe I'll make it the, my word of the day. Oh well. I need to go and get some shopping at some point.
So you take care of yourselves. I'm going to bring this to an end. I wonder what the magician's name was. I said his name earlier. It's not Bobby Davro, that's a comedian. It's not Herbert. Nathan. Paul Daniels. That's it. I just had a name Daniel came up. Because like Nathan, Nathaniel, Daniel, Paul Daniels. I feel ever so pleased with myself. I might even treat myself and pat myself on the head. I'm going to do it. Oh, I felt weird. Bye for now. Bye.